Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE dishwasher electronic control board. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new electronic control board. The electronic control board is located at the bottom of the dishwasher and controls all the functions of the dishwasher. The main reason you'd be changing it out is if the dishwasher is not working properly and you're getting an error code saying the control board is bad. In order to change the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down and then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and pull the lower rack out. All you have to do is reach in and grab it, pull it out. Just lift it off and set it aside. Now we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and carefully use it to start to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. Once you have it out far enough, you can just grab the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Now we're going to put a towel down so we can lay the dishwasher on its back. If you don't want it to scratch anything. Once you have the towel down, just carefully lay the dishwasher on its back. Now that we have the dishwasher on its back, we're going to take the access panel off. We're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take off the screws. Once you have the screws out, you can grab the access panel and insulation and pull it off and set it aside. Now that we have the access panel out of the way, we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw that holds the junction box cover on. Once you have the screw out, you want to lift up and pull the cover off. And then we can reach in and unplug the jumper wire. All you have to do is press on the tab and pull it off. Then we can unplug the wiring harness that goes up to the control panel. All you have to do is press on the locking tab and release it. Now the way the harness is disconnected, we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the screws, hold the electronic control board in. Once you have the screws out, we're going to pull down on the tray here so the board drops down. Once you have it free, you're not going to be able to pull it all the way out because of the wires. We're going to reach in and disconnect the wiring harnesses. We have this one here first. Just press on the locking tab and lift it out. Then we're going to go over and disconnect the other two wiring harnesses. Same as the first one. There's just a locking tab that you press and pull it off. Once you have them all disconnected, we're just going to carefully pull the tray out so we can take the control board out of it. Now we have to take the electronic control board out of the tray, so we set it on a towel so we don't scratch anything. First thing we're going to do is use a quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw that holds the board in. Once 
And then there's some locking pins that go around the board. We're going to use a needle nose pliers to compress the locking pins and lift up on the board. I'm going to lift up on it so it doesn't snap back down. Once you have all the pins released, you can pull the electronic control board out of the tray. Here's the old electronic control board next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new electronic control board in, all you have to do is set it down into the tray and line it up on the white pins. You want to carefully press it down, make sure they lock on. Once you have them in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screw. Now that we have the screw in, we can put the tray back into the dishwasher. To put it in, we're just going to line it up and drop it down into place. Just want to grab the wiring harnesses and make sure they don't fall behind it. You also want to make sure that it goes through this little cutout in the tray, otherwise you won't be able to close the tray later. So we're going to grab the red and the black one. It goes here on the side of the control board. Then we have the brown, yellow, and blue one. It goes here. And then we're going to go down to the other end, plug in this one. You want to make sure that the wiring harnesses is in the little notch right there also, so you can close the tray. Once you have all three connected, we're going to carefully lift the tray up into place. Once you have it in, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws to hold it in place. Now we can reconnect the wiring harnesses. We're going to connect the one in the middle first. This is the one that goes up to the control panel. Just want to plug it in, make sure it locks into place. And then we can do the jumper wire that goes to the power supply. Once you have them in, we can put the junction box cover on. To put it on, all you have to do is push the wires up out of the way. And there is a little tab right here that has to go in the frame right here. So we're just going to turn it around and get the wires underneath there. Make sure the little tab goes into place. Once you have it in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screw in. To put the insulation in, you want to make sure that the cutout for the junction box is on this side. And set it in place and make sure that this upper part goes up into the door. Once you have the insulation in place, we can set the access panel in place and use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws. Once you have the access panel back on, we can carefully set the dishwasher back upon its feet, pull the towel out and push it back into the cabinets. Now we have to reach underneath and put the lines through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected, we can open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws to hold the dishwasher to the countertop.
Now we can put the lower dish rack back in. All you have to do is set it on the door and push it back into place. Once you have it in, you can close the door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.